Okie dokie. So first, uh, these are inequalities, so there's going to be lots of points that satisfy this uh, equation. But first we're going to pretend that it's just an equal and draw this line. So uh, my y-intercept is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and my slope is negative 3 over 1, so I'm going to go down 3 over 1. So from that point, down 1, 2, 3 over 1. I'll do it again, down 1, 2, 3 over 1, down 1, 2, 3 over 1. And so it's a nice and solid line because I can be greater than or equal to this line, right? So if I can be equal to this line, I'll include it and make a nice solid line. And if I'm going to be greater than this line, if the y values are supposed to be greater than it, then like I could take this value or more, this value or higher, this value or higher, this value or higher, right? So I'm just going to be shading above the line. When it's greater than or equal to you shading straight above it. So any of these points should satisfy that equation. You can test it by taking a random point that you've shaded. So 4, 1, for example, should work. So let's test it. Is 1 really greater than or equal to negative 3 times 4 plus 4? 1 is greater than or equal to negative 12 plus 4. Yeah, 1 is definitely bigger than negative 8. And so there's tons of points, an infinite number of points that work, and you're expressing that with your shading. Let's do it again. So here, again, we ignore the inequality for a second, and we just graph the line. We have a y-intercept of negative 5. So we'll start there, slope of three-fifths, so up one, two, three, over one, two, three, four, five. Since it's a greater, less than or equal to sign, it, I can be equal to this line. So I will be make it a nice and solid line. Uh, and now I'm going to be less than. Y's are less than or equal to this line. So instead of having this Y value, I could have this Y value or less than it. I could have this Y value or less than that, this Y value or less than that, everything below the line. And again, you could pick a point and test it. We do it again. Y intercept a negative 5, start there. Uh, there's nothing in front of the X, so we know we're just too lazy to write a 1. So if my slope is negative 1 over 1, I'm going to go down 1 and over 1. So down 1 and over 1. I could have also gone um, 1 over negative 1, because that would be a negative 1 for my slope as well. So I could go up and to the left if I wanted. So up and left, up and left, up and left. And I can tell when I graph these it's going to be a nice and negative slope. If I were to write on the line going left to right, it would be going down. Uh, and this one, I'm strictly greater than. I can't actually equal this line that I've created. So to represent that, I still kind of want to draw it as a boundary, So, but I can't equal it. So to represent that, I'm going to draw a dotted line. Oh, fancy. And so got my dotted line and greater than this, so this y value greater than that, greater than that, greater than that, greater than that, shading up here. Ta-da! All that stuff. All right. This one here, you want to graph the line y equals negative 4 first. So y certainly equals negative 4 down here, and it here, and here, and here, and here. And so this is one of those lovely uh, horizontal lines we talked about in the other video. Again, I can't actually equal this line, so I'm just going to make it dotted. And I'll take all the y values that are greater than negative 4. So all the y values that are greater than negative 4 are up here. So, greater than negative 4, all of that stuff. Any one of these points, right? At that point there, the y value is 3. Certainly greater than negative 4. It works. We do it again. Uh, y intercept to negative 5, slope of 2. So that's 2 over 1. So I'm going to go up 2 and over 1. I could keep going if I want, just to make sure my line ends up straight. Again, can't actually equal it, so I'll make it nice and dotted. And I want to be greater than this line, so bigger than it, higher than it, higher than that point, higher than that point, higher than that point, from all this stuff over here. So all of this good stuff, because remember the line just keeps going down. Alright, one last one here. Uh, up, 
y-intercepted 2, up 7. I'm going to run off the page. So maybe instead of doing 7 over 4 and going up 7 into the right 4, maybe I'll go down 7 into the left 4, see if that fits. So down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, over left 1, 2, 3, 4. And so, yep, looking good. I can be equal to this line. So I'll make it nice and solid. And I'll take the y's that are greater than. And I should have pointed out before, like these have all been nice, the y has been solved for, so it's very clear that you want y's that are greater than it. If it's ever not solved for, just do a little bit of algebra to get that y alone. Put it in that slope-intercept form so you can see where to shade easily. I'm going to flip it over, see if we have an x equals 1. Ah, we do. Next. Excellent. So here the x is less than negative 5, so x certainly equals negative 5 over here, and it equals negative 5 on every single point that I'm drawing, right? So we're getting one of these lovely vertical lines when you have the x equals, and I can't equal this line, so I will make a nice and dotted line. And where are the x's less than negative 5? Well, when x is negative 6, negative 7, negative 8, right? All this stuff over here. So we're shading on this side of the line. Again, any point you pick in the stuff that you're shading, like let's say I pick this point down here, that would be negative 7, oops, negative 6 because I can read on the x, and negative 4 on the y. Again, we've, we've labeled points up since elementary school. Negative 6 on the x, negative 4 on the y is, less, is the x less than negative 5. It's negative 6, so certainly that point works. It gets to be shaded. But none of the points over here have x's that are less than negative 5, so they don't get shaded. As nice as that. Oh, then it starts to get to these guys. So let me do this one here. Uh, I want to solve for the y first, so just a little bit of algebra. I'm going to 3x minus 2y less than 10. So I'm going to kick over the 3x, then I'm going to divide everybody by negative 2. Oh no, when you divide by a negative, that inequality sign will flip. So from less than to greater than, 3 halves x minus 5. And so now this looks nice and normal. So I'm going to graph it from here. Uh, I intercepted negative 5, and then I'm going to go up 3 and over 2 up 3 and over 2, up 3, 1, 2, 3 and over 2. Uh, not equal to is just uh, simply greater than, so I dot it, dashed, and I'm greater than that line, so I'm all this stuff. So again, you want to look at when you shade uh, the one that's the y greater than. You don't want to look at this one because the sign ended up flipping and you can't tell what's happening to the y there. So we do it one more time. A little bit of algebra to get it the y alone first. So I'm going to subtract the 5x over and I'm going to divide everybody by a negative 3. So again when I divide by the negative it ends up swapping that sign so I get 5 thirds x plus 5. A uh, y-intercept of 5 and a slope of 5 over 3. So again it doesn't fit if I do 5 over 3 so a positive 5 over 3 is the same as negative 5 divided by negative 3, so I'll go down 5 into the left 3. So down 2, 3, 4, 5, left 1, 2, 3. And before I draw my line, I can step back and make sure, yes, I would be going up. If I were to write, my letters would be going up. It has a nice and positive slope, as it should. So I'm greater than or equal to that line, so nice and solid, and greater than so up on this side. And yep, I think that's good enough. I think you'll get the rest. Okay.